In this video we're going to demonstrate the recommended way to upload files to the website and then explore various options for displaying those files including the recommended way of creating a document library as seen on the screen. So we're going to jump into the control panel and under manage site content the online libraries are found underneath advanced features and libraries. So if you go to view list add new we have a bunch of libraries already created. If I go to add a new library, the first thing it asks is the type of library that we're going to be creating. So the best way to think of about a library is a, is a collection of resources. So a document library will have a collection of files, but it also would have a collection of uh, online forms or um, external links. Uh, an, image, an image library is basically the same as creating a gallery. The key difference is that for an image library, um, you need to explicitly declare the name um, and sort order of every image that's in the library, which can be useful uh, if you want to create a specific uh, photo gallery. Um, it's not, but it does require, uh, require a little bit extra work to create that image library. And then media libraries are ways of uh, uploading um, uh, video files to the site and listing them into a, a media library. So we'll focus on the document library for now. Um, each library can have a sort order. So uh, there is a page on the site that lists all of your libraries. So you can put them in a specific order. You can also give them a name. And you can choose to show them or hide them um, on specific dates. If you leave the boxes empty for, dis for display start and display end, then the, li the library itself will always be visible. And we also recommend that you create a description for each library so people understand the contents of those libraries and what they might be looking for. The name should be fairly self-descriptive as well, but the description will also um, help. So once the libraries are created, then on the left-hand side, we'd have the libraries option, which would have another group called Manage Libraries with links to each of the individual libraries. So we'll have a look at our demo document library that we had set up uh, or showcased uh, at the video start. And it will then list all of the files that are in this particular library or online forms or links. So when we're looking at an individual library, we can again click on library settings, which is uh, allows us to change uh, the name of the library or the display properties of it. Um, or we can click to add a document, an online form or a link. So uh, if you want to add a link, you just click add link and uh, give it a name and click on or copy and paste the address. So if you want to just say, we're linking to Google and have it sort up maybe last in the list. So we'll make it have a sort order of 99. And as it says, we need to include the HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. It's also, it can be easy just to copy and paste. Most links will have that HTTP part built into them as well. Um, and we hit insert. Then we have just a link to Google in our library. Again, this would be useful if, if the library itself was something like trainers resources and you had a few of the uh, PDF or Word or Excel files that you as your association provides to your trainers and then maybe an online form for something like an incident report form or, um, or, or links to other resources which may be useful for your trainers and have them all in that single repository of a, of a trainers uh, library. Um, but we will be focusing mostly on the document part here so um, if we go add document Again, the library items are always going to be the same. It's going to be the name of the library item and a description and the sort order that the sort order that they appear in the library. And then, in this case, is looking for a file location. So, clicking file location opens up the file explorer. Um, now, unlike images, which we really really organize, um, the document libraries are a little bit more uh, open ended, where you can just uh, choose how you want to organize your files. Um, so we do recommend that things that are season specific uh, be placed into their own folders. So perhaps we'll create a new folder here called 2017 and hit OK and that will create our 2017 folder. Now to upload files, the first thing we have to do is make sure that we are looking at the folder that we want to upload the file to. And again, this is the uh, file explorer showing you all the files that are on the, the website server. So you have to transfer or upload the files from your own computer to the website in order to allow other people to be able to download them. So once we've chosen our 2017 folder on the server, we click upload and then that gives us the upload form, <coughs> which then has a box that says, um, or as allows us to select files. Um, so we're going to find our 
our files uh, folder that here that we've got set up for, as a, for the demo. And we can choose to add individual files, or we, we can choose to select multiple files at once. So I'll go ahead and choose both. <clears throat> and then in addition, if those files already exist on the website and we're uploading a new version of them, we can check that box to overwrite the, any existing files of the same file name um, for, before we click upload. Now, as it does say here, there's a three megabyte limit on this on uh, files. So um, if you have a PDF or a Word document that is uh, rather um, heavy in terms of images and other things like that, like a three megabyte file is still a very large file as long as it doesn't have a lot of embedded uh, rich media content. So a lot of programs will allow you to save your files um, web ready, which would compress them to the point where they will almost in all cases be less than three megabytes. So we'll go ahead and upload and then those files are available. We could then choose to click on one of them, insert that, and that gives us our file location and then we still got to give it a name. So we can say test uh, file and have it show up wherever we want. If we leave the story order blank, then the, the website will show the most recently submitted files uh, first in the list. Now the other thing I'm going to show on the upload, just to make it easier as well, if you were to upload a zip file uh, containing multiple documents, so this particular zip file has three documents in it, you can actually upload the zip file itself, and when it uploads that to the website, it will unzip it and provide all three of the original individual files. So again, that can be a little bit quicker in terms of uploading a large quantity of documents. As long as the zip file itself does not exceed the three megabyte limit, you should be able to upload a whole bunch of files all at once just by using that little zip uh, feature. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's how you upload the files, create your online libraries and have all those files in the list. Now there are ways that uh, you can make it easier for people to find these files. By default, however, um, the most three recently updated online libraries will show on the right-hand column of the home page. So because we just uploaded a new um, item to the document demo document library, that does show as the first one in the list, which again gives people access to um, the, the files that are in that folder. And it does say when it was last updated as well, so people can understand um, when those changes were made. For each file that is a download, it does give the option, or it does tell people how big the file is. And again, it's very important or readily recommended anyway that you provide a description of what each file is so people know what to download and, and, um, and are not confused if there's uh, multiple files that they are uh, looking to, to get a hold of. Now, in addition, <clears throat> you can create links to those files. Um, so if I go back in the control panel, uh, once we've got our library created, which again is the recommended way to start uh, with your files, if we want to add a page in the main menu which links to a specific file, uh, we can click Cite Pages, and if we want to say that perhaps um, this page here called Online Library, um, right now it's linking to our online libraries page, which is the one that's automatically generated on the home page where it says view all libraries. So you can have something in your main menu that again just goes to the list of libraries page. But you can also say that I want to link to a specific online library. So again, once we have our libraries created, I can say, well, I want not only to go to the list of libraries, I want this page in the menu to go specifically to my demo document library. And if I update that, and return back to the site, then my calendar and online library page now goes specifically to my dem demo document library. If I want to go to a specific item within the library, then I can edit that page and instead of choosing online library as the page type, I can choose online library item. And then it would give me a list of all of the online libraries and the items within those libraries where I can then choose which, which individual file I would like to link to. So if I want to link to the team administrator manual in this case and update that, return back to the website and refresh here, then under the calendar and the online library now, and it shows that it's linking to a PDF document. If I click on that, it will open the PDF document directly. So that's adding links to um, items or links to libraries uh, from the main menu. In addition to that, if you want to link to um, a, uh, 
a library item within a news article. Then the link manager, regardless of whether it's in a news article or an event or a web page content, the hyperlink manager should always allow you the ability to um, uh, to link to libraries. So uh, once you've chosen your link source, um, it gives you a bunch of different options down the right hand side here, but one of those will be online libraries. Again, that's going to show you a list of the items as well as the libraries themselves, and you can link to either one of them. So if in this case I want to link to the, the library and not the library item, I can just choose demo document library, insert that. The items will have the little pipe with a dash to indicate that they are underneath the library above. So this odds, odd files and the test media library, they don't have anything in them. That's why there's nothing showing below them. So again, that's the recommended way that we say to upload uh, files to the website and to, to link to them. Um, you don't have to uh, go through the process if you just want to do a single file in the case of something like a news article. Um, you also have the option within the rest of the article area to hit this document manager thing. And when you're doing that, again, it's the same idea of the uh, as the online library item where you're uploading a file to the site, except you don't have to create the, up, the, um, uh, the online library item first. This allows you just to use the document manager directly and upload the files and then link to them within the, um, the contents of the news article or web page or whatever you're doing. Um, but again, for, for long-term maintenance, it's, it, it's usually best to create the library first. And once you've got the library, then to link to it from other places. And that way, if the file does change, so if, for example, maybe it's the, the association constitution, you've put it into an online library, and then that constitution gets amended in a, in a subsequent year, you can go back to the online library item and just update the document that the, 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 the library item refers to and that will then update everywhere else that you've, that you've pointed um, to that constitutional document. It will just update it automatically for you in one spot. So that's why we recommend doing it that way.